Mogo the Planet's Latin, Origins Explored. When it comes to the ranks of an intergalactic law enforcement organization such as the Green Lantern Corps, it goes without saying that the corporation is packed with some of the most determined, self-willed beings. The sole fact that they patrol the most distant and mysterious reaches of the DC Universe shows how the organization embodies living entities from every corner of outer space. Now, if we have to put further stress on these beings, they can range from humans, aliens, to even sentient planets and and this is where Mogo, the living planet, comes into the picture. In today's video, we will be delving deeper into the origins of the biggest and one of the most notable members of the Green Lantern Corps, one that happens to be a creation of the celebrated duo Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons. So are you ready for this? Let's dive right into it then. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you. But for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. What is Mogo the Planet Lantern? The character of Mogo has gone through a few changes. From being a background character to a sentient planet to being the largest member of the Green Lanterns. Add to this the guiding force behind the Power Rings. And let's not disregard the fact that the Living Planet also happens to be the very port of call for all core members to build up their strength. Mogo has indeed come a long way. We are first introduced to Mogo as a one-shot character in a short story by Morin Gibbons titled Mogo Doesn't Socialize. Please know that we do not have a proper record of Mogo's interactions with the remaining DC Universe during its early appearances, and it is also never really disclosed how Mogo joined the Green Lantern Corps. The Conscience Living Planet is mostly seen steering clear of announcing its presence, and when it has to put forward itself, it prefers to do so by resorting to holograms. It is during its first appearance that we learn that Mogo's gravitational field would damage other planets if it was to approach them, and that is the primary reason why Mogo does not socialize or in other words, prefers to remain secluded. Looking at the events of Moore and Gibbons' short story, we learn that the seldom seen Green Lantern was apparently one of the most feared, powerful, and mysterious beings to exist in the universe, and that it had caught the attention of the alien bounty hunter, Bullfunga the Unrelenting. Now, Bullfunga was chiefly known for his determined pursuit of his prey, hence the name, and it should not come as a surprise to you at all when we tell you that he came across as a being, one that was obsessed with violence, and add to his list the Green Lanterns. His desire to battle Mogo ultimately drove him to the planet where he thought Mogo resided. Bullfunga spent decades looking for Mogo, not knowing what it looked like. Upon a closer inspection of the terrain of the planet, Bullfunga eventually discovered that Mogo wasn't on the planet and that Mogo itself was the planet. It's understandable why the extraterrestrial bounty hunter was surprised by this and left right away in his starship. One of Mogo's other encounters has the planet sending holograms so as to purchase the space dolphins of the interstellar mercenary and superpowered bounty hunter Lobo. Being a conservationist of space dolphins, Lobo tried to repossess the dolphins. However, a Mogo hologram appeared and convinced him not to do so. The dolphins, in turn, developed a symbiotic relationship with Mogo, and as for Lobo, he never found out that he was dealing with a living planet the whole time. Now, it goes without saying that Mogo has given shelter to a diverse array of alien races, and has even gone to the whole extent of altering its climactic conditions and thereby making it favorable for them. This has us delving into another encounter of Mogo, one that had the ancient demonic parasitic entity Parallax possessing Hal Jordan and driving him to unthinkable, iniquitous actions such as destroying the central power battery on the planet O. For those of you who are unaware, the central power battery is the main source of power from which the Green Lanterns draw their strength. So naturally, Mogo lost contact with the Green Lantern energy that actually helped sustain it, fell into a comatose state, and drifted off deeper into the cosmos. The planet was eventually located by a wandering alien race who had their own own plans of colonizing Mogo by stripping the planet of its natural resources and contaminating the environment too. But clearly Mogo wasn't the one to give up so easily, and it started reacting like some sort of a reflex action by forming certain constructs, which in turn kept thwarting the plans of the nomadic alien race. It is safe to say that Mogo was ultimately rescued as well as restored by Kyle Rayner. It was only after the restoration of the Green Lantern Corps that Mogo actually took on a more prominent role. The planet became a place of recreation for the fellow Green Lanterns. Not only was Mogo accountable for guiding the power rings to their respective wielders, but also know this, that without Mogo, the rings were completely directionless. 
some marvelous story arcs of Mogo, bringing down Superboy Prime. The sole fact that Mogo actively partook in missions was very much on display when the planet aided in bringing down the villainous Superboy Prime, one who was also addressed as Prime. So what had basically happened was Kal-El and Superman, along with the Green Lantern Corps, were doing their best to stop the deluded Prime. The two Supermen were even seen deliberately flying Prime through Rao, the red son of Krypton, with the sole purpose of weakening him. But doing this decapitated all three of them, and they found themselves crash-landing on Mogo, where Prime was ultimately defeated and taken into custody. Also, if we pay heed to the 41st issue of the 52 storyline, Mogo is reported to have saved Adam Strange and a wounded Starfire before their ship raced towards the sun. Will Mogo be the final Green Lantern? According to a prediction made by Abin Sir, Hal Jordan's predecessor, Mogo would be the final Green Lantern. That's not the only thing. It was further suggested that the old living city ranks, in a battle with the deathless demons who are also known as the Empire of Tears, would detonate an exceedingly powerful bomb within the core of Mogo, resulting in the ultimate death of the sentient planet and simultaneously putting an end to the Green Lantern core once and for all. The readers in due course learnt that terminating Mogo would be nothing short of a cataclysmic blow especially to the core during the events of Sinestro Core War. Now if one is to look into the 11th issue of Green Lantern Core, Mogo was seen representing the Green Lantern Space Sector 674, Kilowog, with some images particularly of the latter's dead species. This naturally had Kilowog triggered and filled with rage especially against the Green Lantern Core. One thing led to another, and Kilowog was seen messing with the minds of the other lanterns, creating illusions, all thanks to the Mogo's powers and, in the process, framing Guy Gardner for his actions. Mind you, the whole thing was actually brought about by the microscopic sentient biovirus Despotilus, one that happened to be a vicious member of the Sinestro Corps. Well, it is only fitting to say that at the end of the day, the sentient city ranks got destroyed, the Sinestro Corps were driven from Mogo, and the sentient planet was saved before getting destroyed. Mogo does socialize after all. Well, there came a time when O was ambushed by the Black Lantern Corps, and Mogo turned up at O to aid in the battle against the reanimated Black Lanterns. Mogo multiplied its gravity to such an extent that the Black Lanterns were literally pulled down to its surface and immersed into its very core. Add to this the exceedingly hot magma within Mogo's core, which repeatedly ignited the bodies of Black Lanterns and prevented them from reanimating, thereby effectively imprisoning and destroying them. Corrupted by Krona. As shown in the events of the War of the Green Lanterns crossover, Mogo wasn't just corrupted, but also taken over by the supervillain Krona for his own sinister schemes. The mission was to build an army for Krona and have them at his disposal and under his control. Of course, Kyle Rayner along with Jon Stewart tried their very best to break him free from Krona's influence, but they were unable to do so. Having no other options left, Stewart was compelled to kill Mogo by first teleporting out of Mogo and then firing the black. Black Lantern energy into Mogo's core. Upon seeing Mogo's corpse orbiting around O, Kilowog, along with a multitude of other Green Lanterns, assembled all its pieces and gave Mogo a proper funeral. The future of Mogo. Did you honestly think that that would be the end of Mogo? Of course, the planet was able to reconstruct itself with the help of Jon Stewart and the old Green Lantern enemy, Fatality. The reconstructed Mogo became the new base of operations for the Green Lantern Corps, and it's fair to say that the planet has been a significant Green Lantern all through the New 52 era, having earned the wrath of the First Lantern too in the process. Last but not least, in the 2008 five-issue limited series, Final Crisis, Legion of Three Worlds, the readers learn that Mogo isn't alive in the 31st century. This means there's no guiding force behind the Power Rings, which further points out that there aren't any Green Lantern Corps, and that it is only the Green Lantern of Space Sector 1760, Sodom Yat, who has survived mainly because of his connection to Ion. Sodom is seen stepping into Mogo's shoes and sending the Power Rings to their respective wielders. Mogo in Batman, The Brave and the Bold. The character essays are quite a central part of the Batman, The Brave and the Bold episode, The Eyes of Despero, one that happens to be the 10th episode of the first season. Here, the evil, rampaging alien tyrant Despero has his own plans of using his hypnotic third eye so as to have the Green Lanterns under his influence. But after he fails to do so, he changes his plans and decides to go after the powerful Green Lantern, Mogo, after realizing that with the living Mogo, Despero would be capable of taking control of billions of minds all at once, 
and with utmost ease, Despero, upon arriving at Mogo, starts remaking the planet in a manner that he wants to, envisioning a new world under his authority, and takes full control of the planet as part of his plan to conquer the universe. Eventually, this has Batman joining forces with the trio of Guy Gardner, Nort, and Sinestro, the last members of the Green Lantern Corps, and together they are successful in making Mogo regain control of itself before the planet ended up launching its final attack on Despero, thereby defeating the alien dictator and foiling his plans of mass destruction. Putting further stress on the character of Mogo, the version on display exhibits an increased control of its landmass. If you remember the events of The Blackest Night, you are bound to find similarities as their Mogo had increased its gravity to such an extent that the reanimated Black Lanterns were literally pulled down to its surface and immersed into its very core. Mogo in Green Lantern, the animated series. Voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson, the character has appeared in episodes titled Lost Planet, Invasion, and Homecoming. Here the character initially appears as this living, male, mysterious planet that for an interminable period of time has caused an innumerable number of ships all throughout the cosmos to crash onto himself with the sole purpose of trapping evildoers on its surface and thereby acting as a prison for them until they're reformed. Because Mogo happens to be a living planet, he has the ability to influence the terrain. For instance, he can split trees to form a path. He can even raise mountains and prevent his prisoners from escaping. In short, he does have the planetary lordship to do what he wants. While digging deeper into the events of the episodes mentioned, we find Hal Jordan and crew following the fallen Green Lantern Shyir Rev's power ring to a mysterious planet, which is on the verge of getting crushed by an approaching asteroid. Upon landing on the planet, they come across two castaways while oblivious to the fact that the castaways in reality happen to be the criminals who have been intentionally stranded on the planet. While looking for the power ring, it does not take how long to realize that that ring has already chosen its new user, one that happens to be none other than the living planet Mogo. With how creating a pit and throwing the ring aside, a green laser fires up from the very pit and destroys the incoming threat. Mogo finally takes possession of the power ring and discloses himself as the sentient planet. He also expresses his gratitude to his saviors and tells Jordan and his crew of his habit of imprisoning criminals on his surface till the time they reform themselves and that he has been doing so for countless years now. After Saint Walker emerged as the first Blue Lantern of the universe, Mogo was seen assisting Walker to the largest asteroid field in the universe, the Maelstrom to be more precise, in order to help Kilowog in stopping the Red Lantern fleet of warships. While Mogo was successful in disarming many warships, it was only after Kilowog grabbed hold of Walker and threw him right in front of Mogo's orbital beam that together they were able to cripple the Armada. Mogo in Green Lantern, Emerald Knights. Before we dive into the details, it is important on your part to know that Green Lantern, Emerald Knights was a 2011 animated superhero flick, which was basically a recollection of a number of stories featured in an anthology format. So Mogo's appearance in the movie is basically the character's detailed encounter with Bulfunga the Unrelenting, especially when the latter was on the lookout for Mogo. Addressing everyone who is trying to relate the story to Mogo's comic story, yes, it is based on that and even features the same title, Mogo Doesn't Socialize. What makes Mogo so powerful? The sole fact that Mogo happens to be a wielder of a power ring, and not just any but a Green Lantern ring, gives the character a horde of abilities. To begin with, the ring is capable of projecting beams. We'd like to stress on extremely powerful force fields and destructive blasts here. The ring can construct whatever the wielder imagines. The ring lets its wearer fly at an incredible speed. The ring can even make the user invisible. That's not all. A green lantern can manipulate matter, increase or decrease the temperature of anything for that matter, control a being, read a person's thoughts, create illusions, absorb powers, go through walls, transform anyone or anything, open wormholes, heal anybody he, she, it wants to, as well as do time travel. Besides all these, the ring can also act as a personal communicator between other Green Lanterns. Another thing that certainly needs a mention is Mogo's extrasensory awareness. The sentient planet is very much aware of whatever is happening, not just around it, but also on it. Mogo's other versions and appearance in other forms of media. The character has appeared in the promotional material for Martin Campbell's 2011 superhero flick, Green Lantern, but has not appeared in the movie itself. 
Mogo has also appeared in a four-issue comic book intercompany crossover miniseries, Green Lantern vs. Aliens, where Mogo was actually the adopted home of the aliens. As per the storyline, Hal Jordan, along with a group of fellow Green Lanterns, were put in charge of dealing with the Xenomorph situation, but he, instead of killing the creatures, had dumped them on the sentient planet Mogo, believing that they would not be a threat to anyone anymore. Of course, this wasn't the case, and with Kyle Rayner visiting the planet years later to save the crew of a crash transport, transport vessel, all hell breaks loose. Mogo has also made an appearance in the comic book series Injustice Gods Among Us, which basically served as the prequel to the fighting video game, also named the same. Mind you, the events take place in a parallel universe. The character is seen traveling to Earth along with the Green Lantern Corps to fight against Superman's villainous regime as well as the Sinestro Corps, only to get pushed into Earth's sun by Superman. Marvelous verdict. Well, that was the origin of the story of Mogo the Planet Lantern, and with this, we finally come to the end of our video here. So, what is it that you liked the most about the sentient planet here? Which is your favorite story arc of Mogo? Hit us with your thoughts in the comments section, and stay tuned with us for more exciting content. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.